I'm Major Grant Thomas, and today I'm going to be presenting to you the ballistic missiles lesson. We've got lots of objectives, lots of equations, lots of fun, so buckle up. Our first objective is that, given the location of a launcher and a target, be able to calculate the range, azimuth, and flight path angle. Our next objective is to know what Q burnout is for a booster, how to calculate it. Third, we've got to know how to perform calculations associated with max range problems, such as Lambda max, phi max range, Q min. We'll discuss all of these terms in detail in the following slides. Um, the next objective is to know how to find the time of flight using the chart. Lastly, you should know how range angle and flight path angle are affected by a rotating Earth. So to begin with, what is a ballistic missile? What are, we, what are we actually talking about here? And really what we're discussing here is a missile that travels beyond Earth's atmosphere up into space, and then it's going to use Earth's gravity to fall back to Earth in a ballistic fashion. So most of its flight is going to be unpowered. Its payload is going to differ from our launch velocities lesson where our payloads were typically satellites. In this case, the payload of our rocket is going to be a warhead. More often than not, it's going to be nuclear. Um, ballistic missiles have several advantages over conventional missiles as well. They have much longer range because they're able to get up outside of Earth's atmosphere. And they have much shorter travel time from the launch site to the impact site because they're up outside of Earth's atmosphere. So they can go essentially from continent to continent in, in 30 minutes. So pretty incredible. All right, so the rest of the lesson, we're going to kind of introduce some more of the geometric terms that you're going to need and some of the uh, math and how these actual missiles arrive from their launch site to their actual target. So our first term is that of range angle, and that's lambda. We call this the trajectory path or range angle. And really what it is, it's almost an angular distance that would define our launch site here to our impact site over here. And if this NP is the North Pole, so we're looking down on the globe here, so it's like an angular distance. Uh, in order to really define this quantity, we need several different things. We need some information about our target um, and about our launch site. That information is our latitude and longitude. So here, the big L is going to represent our latitude, so this LT would be the uh, latitude of our target. LO would be the latitude of our origin point or our launch site. Uh, little LO would be the, lat, uh, the longitude rather of our, of our uh, launch site. And little LT would be the uh, longitude of our target point. So we have an equation down here um, that's given which basically says that our range angle is going to be related to our latitudes of our, of our origin point and our target and the uh, difference in longitude between those two points. All right, so um, our next geometric term is that of launch azimuth, which we're going to define as beta, which you've probably seen uh, in many other lectures. Uh, we like to use beta for our, our direction, so that's good. And so we define that um, conventionally um, from north in the clockwise direction. So um, what would our launch direction be if we're launching from the United States, say, over here to the, the South China Sea? If we're going to actually go in this direction, we would use a beta that was related to that angle that you would see shown here. And one thing to remember is that north is pointing towards the North Pole. It's not necessarily just up. So don't let that confuse you when you're looking at your uh, different problems. You have something on your equation sheet that actually has a relationship uh, that you can derive explicitly. And that says that cosine of beta, or our launch azimuth, is equal to um, a relationship between our latitude of our target, our latitude of our origin point, and our latitude of our origin point again. And, uh, and again, these are range angles that we just calculated before. So there you go. So that's, that's how you can calculate your direction that you need to launch. Okay, our next geometric quantity that we're going to kind of define and that you'll need for your uh, equations that you're going to be working through is that of a trajectory parameter. It's really a relationship um, that we're going to call our rocket power. It's really this non-dimensional quantity we call Q. Um, and Q basically can be defined, um, most rockets have a Q less than 1 in which they can go the short way from their target. So they basically have an elliptical trajectory that impacts the Earth at two points, really here at the launch site and then over here at our target. Um, or you could have something that has a Q of greater than 1, uh, in which case our rocket has a V burnout that's greater than V circular. In other words, it can achieve orbit and we can hit any different location on the surface of the Earth. So uh, if we have a really powerful rocket, a really high Q number, uh, then this allows us to be more flexible in what targets we can actually hit and achieve. All right, so what is Q burnout? So Q burnout is related to our V burnout, our velocity at burnout. 
and our R at burnout, so R again is our position from the center of the Earth to wherever our rocket would be at when it reaches its max altitude, over the mu of the Earth. If Q burnout again is less than 1, you can only go the short way. If Q burnout is greater than 1 or equal to 1, you can reach anywhere on Earth. So increasing Q means that you're changing the shape of your trajectory. All right, so the next quantity that we're going to define is that of flight path angle. Uh, we call that phi, so phi burnout. And really to kind of understand this, we kind of have this hokey drawing over here in your book, but it's actually pretty useful in this case. Uh, imagine you have a garden hose and you're trying to, you know, spray your dog because you know, he's, he's dirty, I guess, and you're trying to wash him off. Anyway, so you basically got a, a hose that you can either, you can use this low trajectory and hit him like this. You can hit this high trajectory here, or you could actually use this kind of middle, in the middle range here and actually overshoot him. So typically we don't want to do that unless we're just trying to see how far we can possibly spray this hose. Um, potentially somebody's walking by over here and we want to get them wet as well. So this would be our max range. We're going to kind of use this example uh, to illustrate what our fees are going to be because we're basically going to have two different fees. We're going to have a fee uh, burnout high should be kind of like the high trajectory. So it's a path that we would achieve or take to, to hit our target and we go up way high. Um, this allows us some advantages uh, to get up outside of Earth's atmosphere as fast as possible. Uh, so it allows us typically to be more accurate because we're basically spending less time in the uh, region of Earth's atmosphere. We experience the most drag and the most, most uncertainty. Uh, you've got an equation for that on your equation sheet here. It's related to um, our range angle again and Q burnout. We've also got a Q burnout low, which it has another equation here. So both the Q burnout low and the Q burnout high would hit the same point. They would just take two different paths to get there. So there you go. And then if we wanted to, we could actually find the max range of our flight path angle. So this might be useful if, for instance, we were trying to consider uh, the the furthest target that we could hit from a particular launch site. Uh, this is the equation that we might use. We, we might use this uh, max range equation, which is related to our range angle again. Um, and we can also calculate our max range angle. And to do that, you need to know how strong our rocket is, or really what our rocket power is, and specifically Q burnout. So that we've got an equation for that. So that allows us to know the maximum range angle that we can actually hit. And then we've got our minimum trajectory parameter to reach a particular target. In other words, if we have a particular target, what's the smallest rocket that can actually get me there? And so I have an equation for that as well, and it's related to, again, range angle. There you go. All right, we've talked about a lot of equations. We've talked about a lot of different things. Is there an easier way? And it turns out, yes, actually there is. There's a table, so I'm going to show you the next few slides how to use a table. So if you'd prefer, you can actually use the table instead of using your equation sheet um, to actually get some of these answers. So the table is going to look in general like this, um, but we'll talk about it in more details. It's called the table or the chart. Uh, so there you go. You can find copies of it in your book as well. So our first uh, question here would be, um, let's say that we had a particular rocket that had a Q of 0.9. So um, it has a Q of less than one, so we're, we're only going to be able to go the short way. Um, and we have a range angle that's 82.6. So this would be given to you in a particular problem. Um, how could I use this chart to actually calculate what my fee might be? So how would, I, how would I go about using this chart? So there's a lot of different axes here, so we'll kind of define these things as we go. Um, but the first is you've got these uh, along the x-axis here. You've got degrees, and it says range. So this is actually our range angle. So this would be essentially our lambda. Uh, and then we've got these blue lines here that are kind of these arced lines. These are our Q values. So we have a Q of 0.9, so we can already kind of idea, identify what blue line we're going to trace out. Uh, and then we've got several other values as well. Uh, if you look, you've got these red lines coming down this way, and those are our flight path angles. So those are our fees. And, and then last but not least, we have these values over here, which are, um, it looks like 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3. That's our time of flight. Uh, over our P circular. So we're going to talk about that in the subsequent slide. Uh, but basically, we're going to be able to use this chart to calculate our time of flight, which well, is actually going to be pretty handy. Uh, one more thing I'll identify for you. We've got this line here, this green line that goes right through the center of all this. And this says, it says maximum range. 
So this is going to be our line of maximum range. So since we're taking the short way, uh, we've got a maximum range that we can hit. And anything below this line is going to be our low trajectory. And anything above this line is going to be our high trajectory. So this would be like anything that we're, you know, if we're using the water hose example, this would be like the low example to hit the dog on the, on the low arcing path. And then the high trajectory would be the high arcing path to hit the same dog. So there you go. All right, so to come back to our question. So what is my flight path angle if I knew these two things? How do I use the chart to do this? Well, I can start by identifying just the, the two things that I had just talked about. So my Q is 0 0.9. So if my Q is 0 0.9, that means I can already kind of identify what um, blue line I'm going to be along. And then I'm going to find my range angle of 82.6, so that's approximately here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw a straight line up like this. And what I find is that I actually intersect at two different points. So I intersect this uh, particular um, target at two different points. And what does that really imply? It means that I have two different flight path angles that would allow me to hit my target. Well, um, in the problem, we might say something like, oh, we want you to only look at the high trajectory. So if we ask you to look for the high trajectory, then you would pick off this point. Um, okay, great. If I asked for the low trajectory, that would be this point right down here. Okay, so what is my question really asking me? It's asking me for the flight path angle. So what is my flight path angle? Well, I identified these red lines before, and what I find is that I'm right here on this point. I'm between 50 and 40 of a flight path angle. In fact, I'm not quite halfway, and so if I was doing the problem, I would say that I'm approximately 42.5. Uh, which is pretty close. Uh, for your for your GR or what have you, um, if you're using the chart and you estimate these things, and as long as you're pretty close, that should be sufficient for us. Um, we're not necessarily looking for uh, multiple significant, significant figures or anything like that. All right, so um, how do I use this chart to calculate my time of flight? Because I, I kind of teased that out uh, earlier, so let's discuss that in detail here. So how do I use this same chart? So let's imagine that we still have the same problem. We have a Q of 0.9, a range angle of 82.6 degrees, and a flight path angle of 42.5 degrees. What is my time of flight, and how would I actually go about calculating that? Well, um, I'm at the same intersection point since all the things were before. Again, I'd have to tell you explicitly, uh, look at the high trajectory, so that's something that you would have to do. Um, you could also draw a line straight across here over to look at this TOF, TOF over p uh ratio. And what I find is that I get about, um, I found that to be 0.58 of p circ, which we're going to talk about here in just one minute. Um, so um, for right now, you would just write down 0.58 p circ. Next, you could calculate your max range. And how do I do that? Well, for that, I look at my green line. And so I have the same rocket because the rocket is what I have. It has a 0.9 Q. And so that Q puts me right here at this point right there. That's where I intersect this green line. And what does that mean? Well, it means if I wanted to figure out the farthest possible target that I could hit, it's 110 degrees away from me in terms of lambda. So there you go. So that would be 110 degrees. Um, and then lastly, we have this... Uh, phi max range. So what is my phi max range? Well, I can actually identify two lines here that bracket my max uh, point here where my phi or my lambda rather max range is at and I'm closer to 20 than I am to 10. I said that's approximately 18. Sorry, it's clipped off there in the video, but you can get the idea. So that's how you use the chart. Um, so in the previous slide, I just mentioned that um, you wrote 0.58 of p, of p circ as your time of flight. Well, that doesn't sound like a time of flight that you calculated before, but it turns out that if you wanted to, p circ is actually the circular orbit period. And we have lots of equations for the period, but um, in this case, we're going to assume a circular orbit, and we're going to use our burnout for the dimension of our actual orbit. And so I can calculate what that period is, and my time of flight is going to be uh, this number here, which we calculated from before, so if we were using the previous slide, that'd be 0.58 multiplied by p circ, and that gives us our time of flight. So that's how you use the, the chart to actually calculate a time of flight. But we all know that the Earth is actually rotating, and most of the things we've been talking about previously, we're talking about our Earth 
that wasn't rotating. So what, does, what effect does a rotating Earth have on our actual ballistic missile trajectory? Because our ballistic missile is traveling for maybe 30 minutes in the air, which is a significant amount of time if we don't take into account the fact that our target's going to be moving under us while we're actually trying to go, uh, trying to go meet it then we're actually going to be off target. So we have to take that into account. So how do we actually go about doing that? Well, we have an equation for that. Um, and basically, it's related to the Earth's angular velocity, which is not surprising. It's 15 degrees per hour. And we can figure out what our actual correction needs to be to our range angle using this equation. Here's another just kind of image of what this might look like. So as our Earth is rotating, our target um, is kind of spinning underneath us, so we need to kind of um, be able to anticipate where it's going to be and aim for where it's going to be, not necessarily for where it is. All right, so here's the kinds of questions that you might see um, on a GR and the kinds of things that I would expect you to be able to um, kind of reason through uh, when we give you something about taking into account the fact that Earth's rotating. So if we're launching eastward and the Earth's actually rotating eastward, uh, the impact on our range is that our range is going to go up. So if our range goes up, that has a particular impact on our flight path. And to think about this, I like to use this chart that we were talking about before, kind of with the dog. Um, so this is our low path here, and this is our high path. If our range is actually moving closer towards this max, so it's moving out towards the red, then what do I need to do if I'm on the low flight path angle? Well, if I'm on the low flight path angle, I actually need to crank up my angle just a little bit so that I can actually get out to this target. And if I'm on the high flight path angle, I actually need to decrease my angle just a little bit so that I can actually hit this target a little bit further out. And what's the impact on my time of flight? Well, if I'm launching eastward, my time of flight is going to go up because the Earth is going to be essentially rotating underneath me. Um, if I'm on the low uh, flight trajectory path. So if I'm on this path here, then my time of flight is actually going to go up. And if I'm on the high path, since I'm now choosing just a slightly lower angle here to hit my target, my time of flight is actually going to decrease just a little bit. All right, so that was all for eastward. What about if I'm going westward? Um, well, if I'm launching westward, things are going to be just a little bit different. In fact, they're going to be almost exactly opposite, right? So my range is going to actually decrease uh, because the Earth is going to be actually moving towards me, I guess, as I'm launching out towards, uh, towards the particular target. Uh, for, the f for the flight path angle, my low trajectory is actually going to have to decrease because I'm trying to hit a target that's a little bit closer to, the, to me than, where, uh, than I would typically think with a non-rotating Earth. If I'm taking the high path, I'm going to take a little bit higher path to actually achieve this point. Uh, for time of flight, uh, my time of flight for the low path is going to go down, and my time of flight for the high path is going to go up. So make sure that you're familiar with this chart and kind of the impacts that a rotating Earth would have on our trajectories. Um, and that's the kinds of questions that you might see on a GR. All right, so that was the ballistic missiles lesson in a nutshell. I've told you how to basically figure out what the range, azimuth, and flight path angle are. I've taught you about what Q burnout for it, what it is, and how to calculate it. Uh, how to perform the calculations associated with the max range. Um, how to use the chart. I talked all about the chart. And go back and look at those examples if you want some more, some more help on that. And then I've talked a little bit about what the effect of a rotating Earth is uh, for our ballistic missile from leaving our um, actual launch site to actually impacting a particular target. I hope we find that useful. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Major Thomas, and I'm going to go through a ballistic missiles tutorial with you. I'm going to basically go through a problem where we work through both using the numbers and using the chart. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, so today's lesson is all about ballistic missiles. Um, so here's the exercise that I'm going to work through, and basically my plan is to work through this initially with um, the math, and then after we kind of get all the math together, I'll show you how easy it is to use the chart at the end. So to begin with, here's our problem statement. It says, you must, lo you must launch a ballistic missile from Malmstrom, Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana, which is at 47.5 degrees north, 
111.2 degrees west, to Yap Island in the Pacific Ocean um, at 9.5 degrees north, 138.1 degrees east. Uh, when the rocket has expended all of its fuel at 350 kilometer altitude, it is expected to have a velocity of 7.5 kilometers per second. And the first thing that I'll note is that this 350 kilometer altitude and the 7.3 kilometers per second, those are basically your, um, you know, RBO, our burnout, and uh, VBO, respectively. All right, so the question, the first the question says, calculate the following parameters. It says, uh, calculate the range angle from the launch site to the target. Uh, and they give you that the variable is lambda. Uh, so to do that using your equation sheet, if you pull out your equation sheet, you'll find that the cosine of our range angle is equal to the sine of our launch site latitude multiplied by our, the sine of our target latitude, so that's capital LT, plus cosine LO, cosine LT, times the cosine of delta little l. And this little l, this is our delta longitude. All right, great. So what am I going to use for my launch site latitude? Well, if I look back up at the, at the problem statement, I found that it was 47.5 degrees north. So I'm going to write 47.5. Um, and then multiplied by the sine of 9.5. Why is it 9.5? Because my target uh, latitude is at 9.5. Plus the cosine of 47.5 times the cosine of 9.5 um, times the cosine of... Now here's the tricky part. Um, I'm at 111.2 degrees west, right? And I need to go to a 138.1 degrees east. Uh, and so in order to get to those two things, what, what I typically do is since I'm I, at a west um, longitude, what I typically do is instead of using a positive number, I'm going to make this negative 112 or oh, sorry, 111.2 degrees east. And I make it negative because that allows me to essentially add those two things together. Uh, so minus 111.2 minus 138.1. So that would be my delta L, change in longitude, um, in east components, if that makes sense. All right, excellent. So what do I get? I get that the cosine of my range angle is equal to negative 0.1138. And that means that my actual range angle, I take the inverse cosine of that, is 1.685 radians. Or typically we like to express our range angle in terms of degrees. So our range angle would be 96.54 degrees. Make sense? Great. All right, so our launch azimuth. How do I do my launch azimuth? Well, if I look to my equation sheet, I have another equation that says the cosine of my launch azimuth, beta, is equal to the sine of my target latitude minus the sine of my origin latitude times the cosine of my range angle, which I just calculated, all over cosine of LO times the sine of my range angle. So if I plug in values here, I'm going to use 9.5 for my target latitude minus the sine of 47.5. Uh, times the cosine of 96.54 because uh, that's what I just calculated and I want to use I want to use degrees here not radians um, because I'm using degrees for the rest of these 
and then I say times cosine or over the cosine of 47.5 times the sine of my 96.54. All right. Um, throw all that in my calculator. I'll save you a couple steps here. I found that it was equal to 0.371. So I take the inverse cosine of that and I get 68.22 or 281 looks like 0.77 degrees. So that's my launch azimuth. Great, so azimuth is my direction, range angle is essentially my distance. Um, so the next one I'm gonna need is my, uh, my basically my rocket parameter. Um, so I call it my missile trajectory parameter, kind of related to my rocket power. If I look at my equation sheet, it says that QBO is equal to VBO squared times RBO all over mu. Uh, if I plug in numbers there, how do I find out what RBO and VBO are? Well, it turns out in this problem, I don't have to do any calculations. Uh, they're basically given to me. So VBO is 7.3 kilometers per second. So 7.3 kilometers per second squared. I'm gonna leave off the units just because I don't have a ton of room here. Multiplied by, um, and I have a 350 kilometer altitude. So that means I need to add the radius of the Earth. So 350 plus 6378.137. And all of that is going to be divided by 3986.00.5. Leaving off the units to save some space here. And I end up with a, with a Q of 0.9495. So I have a Q that's less than 1. So what does that mean that I need to do? It means I can only go only the short way. All right. Okay, so our next high and low flight path angles at burnout, FIBO high and FIBO low. So if I look again at my equation sheet, it's not too complicated, but it, it looks rough. It looks rougher than what it actually is. Um, FIBO is equal to, and I'll do the low first. So FIBO low is equal to one half times the inverse sine of the quantity 2 minus QBO, which I just calculated, divided by QBO. All that guy times the sine of lambda over 2. That quantity minus lambda over 2. And close my bracket there. If I plug in numbers there, um, I end up getting that my actual uh, FIBO low was 3.696 degrees and FIBO high is basically equal to the same equation except for I have this 180 degrees minus the inverse sine of the quantity 2 minus QBO over QBO times the sine of lambda over 2. Um, that whole quantity minus lambda over 2 again. I found that that was equal to 38.04 degrees. Saving you some steps in there, but that's the idea. Okay, so what's the maximum range angle of the missile? So what does this really mean? It means that given that I have a rocket that has a particular power or trajectory parameter, QBO, it's going to have a maximum range. So it can only go to a certain point. So this question is actually asking me to calculate what's the maximum distance. And it turns out that it's going to give me an angle, but that angle is going to be related to a disc distance. Uh, so how do I find what the what the range angle is, the maximum range angle. Well, I go to my equation sheet again. In my equation sheet, I have something that says lambda max is equal to two times the inverse sine of QBO divided by two minus QBO. 
where QBO I found to be 0.9495. And I throw all that in my calculator, dot, 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 and I ended up getting 129.32 degrees. Okay, so next we've got our flight path angle for the maximum range. So, so what does this mean? So we've calculated what our maximum range, kind of our maximum distance is, but we need to figure out what the path angle to get there is. So to get, in order to achieve that maximum range, what is, what is the angle that I need to kind of set my rocket at to launch it at to actually get to my target? So that's my flight path angle. So to do that, I can actually use um, an equation on my equation sheet as well. And if you look at that, it says that FIBO at the max range, I'm just going to call it max, is equal to 45 degrees minus lambda max, which I just calculated, divided by 4, equals 45 minus 129.32 all over 4. <coughs> Excuse me equals 12.67 degrees. So I've got a maximum range angle and I've got a maximum flight path angle. Um, so what's the, the next kind of logical question is going to be what's the minimal rocket um, size that I can get to get there? So I'm going to turn the camera down just so you can see the rest of this paper here. All right, so the minimum trajectory parameter that would enable the mission to reach the target, QBO min. So how do I find that? Well, equation sheet says QBO min is equal to 2 times the sine of lambda over 2 divided by 1 plus the sine of lambda over 2, where lambda is my range angle. That's going to be equal to 2 sine 96.54 divided by 2 all over 1 plus sine of 96.54 divided by 2. That's all equal to 0 0.855. So that's the minimum sized rocket, if you want to think of that, that minimum rocket parameter that I can have to actually hit, um, hit my target. Okay. Almost there. So we got to figure out their time of flight. So how do I figure out my time of flight? So the time of flight for the high, high trajectory, um, that's going to be related to our chart. In fact, I don't know how to find this without the chart, and so I'm going to use the chart to do that. So let's go ahead and, and pull out our chart and see if we can make some sense of the problems that we've solved so far. All right, so here is a version of the chart. Um, I'm pulling it up digitally just so I, I think it'll be easier for you guys to be able to read the numbers on here than it will be on a piece of paper, but it should look very similar to what you've had. And so what I'd like to do is actually go through the problems that we've solved so far and see if our, if our numbers line up and where and how the chart would make our lives easier if we decide to use that method. All right, so to begin with, let's start with number one here. It says... Uh, the range angle. So um, can I use my chart to solve for the range angle? Not necessarily, but once I have a range angle, I can actually show that on the chart. And so I'll, I'll do that now. So um, if I uh, look at my range angle, I found that to be 96.54 degrees. So uh, the range angle of 96.54, um, what would that look like on this chart? So 96, roughly, yeah, just a little over half. So um, 96, that would just be a line that goes straight up. Uh, so that's my range angle. Great, so that was number one. All right, so my launch azimuth, I can't actually sh do anything with that on the chart, so I'm going to skip that one. Um, but my mis missile trajectory parameter, my QBO, I can absolutely do. And I found that to be 0.9495, so roughly 0.95. So 0 0.95, uh, I'm going to show a Q of 0.95, as something that looks like this, so I would kind of trace out this line. Uh, so now I've got my 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 Q and my uh, lambda, my range angle, um, and the intersection of those two points is essentially my uh, is how I can find my FIBO. So uh, number four says to calculate my FIBO high and FIBO low. I found that to be 3.69 uh, for the low and 38.04 for the high. 
So 3.7 roughly and 38.04 degrees. Is that what I'm seeing here? So let's let's see. Uh, so let's look at the high one first. So that's going to be like 38. So here's the intersection of the Q and the and the lambda, um, and that's going to be between these two red lines. So between the 40 and let's see here, between the 40 and the 30, um, and it's closer to the 40. So that looks like pretty close to 38. So I'd say that one's pretty correct. And then what about the, the low one? So it should be about 3.7. So that's going to be between the 10 and the 0, but much closer to the 0. Looks like about 4 to me, so pretty close. So there's my, uh, my flight path angle. So that's how I figure out what my flight path angles are. Okay, great. So if I go back to my question, it says number 5, find the maximum range angle. So the maximum range angle is where this green line here, so this green line intersects my rocket line, so my Q. Um, and that's going to be roughly right here. And this is going to be my max range angle. Uh, well, I have to do one more thing. I have to draw a line straight down from here down to the bottom here. And it's going to be roughly, uh, I found it to be 129, which I'm showing 130. So that's yeah, pretty close. All right. So the next one is, uh, what is um, um, my time of flight? So how do I figure out what my time of flight would be? Oh, actually, before we do time of flight, I guess we could roll back just one second. Um, we can find the, the QBO max. So that's number six. I'm sorry, I skipped ahead just a little bit. Um, QBA max, QBO max uh, should be 12.67. Is that what I find? So I'm in between 10 and 20. I'm much closer to 10. So yeah, I'm pretty close to 12. So I'd say that one would also be correct. Um, so if I had the chart, I wouldn't necessarily had to have done this calculation. I could have actually just looked this one up on the chart. So excellent. Um, okay, so what are we doing next? So next, we need to figure out what our time of flight is. So the time of flight is um, I told you that you need to use the chart for this. Um, um, you need to say something here. Uh, the time of flight, um, this is something that we would give you. We're going to say that's for the high trajectory because um, we need to specify that for you. So in the problem statement, that'll, that'll be given. So the high trajectory. So if, if I go to the high trajectory and I draw a line straight over here to this axis here, the y-axis, which is... I read these alternate numbers kind of in the gray over here, um, the TOF over P circ lines. Um, and I can actually see where that intersects. In fact, it's like 0 0.6, and this would be 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.61, this would be 0.62. It's, so it's between 0 0.62 and 0 0.63, um, which I said was basically 0 0.625. And so my ratio here is going to be uh, time of flight over p circ equals 0.6, uh, 0.625. Um, and so to figure out what that would be, um, I can actually go back to my sheet here. So, uh, so looking at the chart, I found that my ratio of time of flight uh, to p circ was equal to 0.625, which I can multiply both sides by P circ, which tells me that my time of flight is equal to 0 0.625 multiplied by P circ. Uh, great, so how do I find P circ? Well, P circ, if I look at my equation sheet, I have an equation for that, and I find that it's 2 pi times uh, my R cubed, which in this case would be 350 plus the radius of the Earth, 6378.137. I'm going to leave off the units. That's cubed all over 3986.00.5. Um, if I throw that on my calculator, I found that my period was 5,492.29 seconds. Great, so now we have the period of our circular orbit. We have to just multiply this period by the 0.625 uh, to get our time of flight. 
Um, and so if we do that, we get that our time of flight is equal to 0.625 multiplied by the 5,492 seconds. Um, and I found that our time of flight is equal to 3,432 seconds, um, which is roughly 57 minutes, 57.2 minutes. Okay, so that is our time of flight. Great, okay, so now we're on to number nine. So if we were to account for the rotation of the Earth, what would you change about this trajectory? Okay, so uh, we've basically worked through this problem up to this point, assuming an Earth that is not rotating. Um, but if we are having a rotating Earth, then we're going to have some sort of uh, parameters that are going to be changing. And we can actually say a lot about different parameters. In fact, we're going to be able to say something about our lambda, our range angle. Uh, we're going to be able to say something about our beta. Um, we're going to be able to say something about QBO, about FIBO, both in the high and in the low. Uh, we're also going to be able to say something about lambda max, QBO, sorry, FIBO max. Um, and QBO min. And lastly, about our time of flight. So we're going to be able to say something about these. And really what we're looking for here is more uh, qualitative answers. We're not necessarily looking for anything um, uh, specific, like no numbers here, um, more or less direction. So I'm going to use up and down arrows, and a dash is going to mean essentially uh, there's no effect. So the first thing to consider is which direction are we actually launching? And so I'm going to move the camera back up to our kind of our problem statement here. Um, we're in Montana. We're going uh, to Yap Island in the Pacific Ocean. So are we launching west or east? So we're starting west. We're going out towards the Pacific. So we're actually launching westward. So if we're launching westward and the Earth is rotating eastward, that means that we're actually not going to have to, the, the rotation of the Earth is actually going to bring our target underneath us, if that makes sense. Um, so our range angle is actually going to go down slightly. And consequently, our beta is actually going to turn actually as well, and so we're not going to need quite as much angle, so that's also going to go down. Um, what about QBO? Well, what is QBO really related to? It's related, if you look back up here um, at number three, um, it's related to our velocity at burnout and our R at burnout. Well, those two things haven't changed, uh, regardless of whether the Earth is rotating or not. So QBO is actually going to stay the same, so it's not going to change at all. Um, okay, does that make sense? It kind of makes sense, right? In fact, we might even be able to say something about, um, well... We, we'll, we'll save that for just a minute. All right, so what about the flight path angle? Um, so the flight path angle for our high and our low trajectory, how is that going to change? Well, since our lambda has gone down, so that means we don't have to go quite as far, um, our FIBO in the high trajectory actually has to go up. So it's like we're doing a longer shot to actually make it to where, a higher shot to make it a little bit shorter to where we need to go. Um, and uh, sorry, our flight path angle low is actually going to have to go down. So it's actually going to go down. So we have up and down. And you'll typically see that kind of uh, direction. These both are they're either going to go, one's going to go up and the other's going to go down, or the other's going to go down and the other's going to go up. Does that make sense? All right. So let's talk about our maxes and mins. Uh, okay, so lambda max, is that going to increase or decrease? Well, since the target is kind of rotating towards us, we're actually going to be able to cover more ground since we're launching westward. So our phi max, or lambda max, rather, is going to go up. Um, our phibio max is actually going to stay the same because we're going to basically use the same rocket. And even though our angle, or yeah, our range angle is going to go up, uh, we're going to basically use the same angle to hit that target. Our QBO is actually going to go down and 
why is that? Because we don't need as strong a rocket to hit that particular target. Does that make sense? So QBO is kind of a measure of our rocket power. Um, and since we're our target's moving a little bit closer to us, that's going to decrease. And our time of flight, since our target's moving closer to us, is also going to decrease. So that was a pretty exhaustive um, problem here. We went through the chart. We went through um, the actual um, numbers as well. So these are the kinds of things that you would need to be able to do for the GR or the final. So that wraps up our ballistic missiles uh, lesson tutorial. So hopefully you learned a couple of things about how to use the chart and how to use the equations that are on your equation sheet. Uh, best of luck in the GR and see you around.